Hello everyone, this is Jamie here. Welcome to another session of Vistex Full Services. In this series of Project Manager plugin, we'll be exploring some of its main features. In this session, you will learn how to quickly create and edit IES slides efficiently and automatically based on your rendering engine, create and edit textures automatically and intelligently based on your rendering engine, create and align proxies intuitively and efficiently based on your rendering engine, create and reorganize virtual file systems efficiently and independently from your hard drive, create and edit materials based on your rendering engine, search and relink missing files automatically, select, move, copy, cut and paste multiple folders and much more. So without further ado, let's start by clicking on the project manager button and opening it. To begin exploring some of the project manager's main features, let's select multiple folders in Explorer and drag and drop them into Models tab. As you can see, this section is divided into four parts. The Models tab, Materials tab, Textures tab and IES tab. Users can drag and drop folders into any of these separately, in any specific order. As an example, in the Materials tab we can simply drag and drop one or multiple folders at once. In the Textures tab and IES tabs we can do the same. Going back to the Models tab, all these folder structures are virtual and can be organized in any specific order without affecting the way they appear on your hard drive. This feature alone is an amazing way to organize your favorite folders, messed up file structures and much more without ever interfering with your old hard drive. Also, it saves users a lot of time by allowing you to reorganize everything inside Max. To directly affect your hard drive, users need to cut, copy and paste folders or items or simply delete them by confirming in a message to delete from hard drive. To select multiple folders or items, simply hold down the control key on your keyboard and begin selecting folders one by one. Or select one item and use the shift key to select a host of them in a list. Also, while multiple folders are selected, users can right click and choose to copy, followed by right clicking and choosing to create a new folder or catalog and pasting into it. Here, you can see all the pasted items. As mentioned earlier, pasted or cut items are not virtual and become part of your hard drive. To hide specific files or folders from the list, simply select them, right click and choose to hide from the models. You just can also choose to rename, convert catalog, refresh, cut, delete from hard drive, remove from models, add to batch, render and relink and auto assign previews. In this instance, we are going to choose the Hide from Models option. In Hide Directory dialog, we can choose Hide only current, Hide all or cancel. Let's choose to Hide only current. As you can see, it's hidden from the list. Apart from cutting and pasting, most of these changes are only affecting what you see in a project manager, not your hard drive. To see the hidden items, simply click on this button here. In the Hidden Directories dialog, you can see all the hidden items listed. Users can choose to select and remove or add new items. For the purpose of this exercise, let's choose to select and remove all items. To close this dialog, simply click on this button again. All hidden folders are visible again. Another feature we'll be exploring is the ability for project managers to associate images or JPEGs to specific 3ds Max files via auto assign previews option. If you select one of these folders, we can quickly see the Max file has a simple wireframe preview. In some cases, there aren't any max file previews at all. In these other separate folders, by clicking on this button, we will see the images and JPEGs with the exact same names as the 3ds Max files, which I've already renamed accordingly. Two different file types having similar names will make it easier for Project Manager to make the automatic association when the auto assign previous function is applied. To use the auto assign previous function with multiple folders, Let's start by selecting all the relevant folders we want to use the auto assign previous function with. Next, right click and choose the auto assign previous option from the list. The options dialog should be prompted. Ensure to have all these options and file extensions enabled, followed by clicking to continue. In the auto assign previous dialog under search and directories group, the same directory is enabled by default. First option is quick and only searches in one directory. Because you're using multiple directories, let's enable the subdirectories, parent directory, and nearest directory. These four options will be searching for file associations in all directories, which will take slightly longer. Also, ensure the include suffix option is enabled and click start. As you can see, 
all the file associations that they made. The same approach can also be applied to the materials tab. This technique only works with saved material libraries. In here, we have saved material library and this folder is where we have images and JPEGs associate them with. Select multiple folders as previously done, followed by right clicking and choosing the auto assign previews. As you can see, all material associations have been made. In the textures tab, we are going to drag and drop new set of textures inside a folder. Let's reduce the size of the Project Manager dialog first. Next, open the Material Editor dialog by clicking on this button. To create a new material, users can simply drag and drop textures from each tab into the Material Editor. As you can see, a new V-Ray material was automatically created and named accordingly, with a texture applied to the diffuse toggle. To create a new material, select another texture. Under Texture Map Options, users can choose the option to tile the texture using the Real World or the Constraint Proportions function. As an example, we can type in to tile the texture by 2000mm. The default material options is using the current rendering. Users can choose from a variety of other rendering engines available from the list, followed by dragging and dropping in the Material Editor to create a new material. Click in its diffuse toggle to see its bitmap coordinates. As you can see, it matches with the texture map options previously set. In the IS tab, users can set rendering settings and color temperatures by tweaking with its parameters here. There's also the option to preview the IS profile in a diagram mode. The Auto by Render option uses the loaded rendering engine in your 3ds Max file to automatically create an IES light in your scene when you drag and drop it. To create an IES light based on your rendering engine, simply drag and drop it in your scene. The Object Place in Paint dialog should automatically appear. You can choose any of these options available. The Smart Align mode automatically aligns objects in the scenes as you create them with a mouse click. To exit the creation, simply right click. To select the lights in the scene, choose to filter the selection to lights on the main toolbar and select all the lights, followed by moving and placing them accordingly. Users can also choose to replace the selected lights. To do so, simply select another IES light in the project manager, right click and choose to replace selection. The replace object dialog allows users to replace all instance, selection only or simply cancel. The option to keep selection adds new lights in a scene while retaining the previous one as opposed to completely replacing them with a the selected one. Choose the selection only option. As you can see, the selected lights were replaced. Let's scroll down the list and choose another IS light to replace the set with. The IS lights were automatically replaced again. This amazing workflow allows users to build a scene very quickly and efficiently. Back in the Materials tab, users can assign materials to objects by simply dragging and dropping them against the object in the scene. In the Models tab, users can also create objects in a similar way the IES slides were created. Before merging any object in the scene, users can choose from a variety of these options available here. In a Place and Group, users can choose the default home grid only, select objects or scene objects. In a clone section, keep the instance method when placing and creating objects with a mouse click. In the align mode, users can choose a smart alignment or normal. When creating objects, you can choose to display them as boxes and to paint on selected objects. In exclude group, you can choose what to exclude from selected scene. Shapes, hidden, frozen objects and cameras are automatically excluded. You can uncheck these default options if desired. In the Merge Options group, the objects are set to be merged as proxies by default and to use existing proxies in a scene, if any. However, users can change these default options if desired. Drag and drop it to paint create the object in the scene. The object is automatically created in the scene with the previously set parameters. 
every time you click in a scene, a new object is created as previously set by default. To exit creation, simply right click. As you can see here, a V-Ray Mesh for a proxy was automatically created in the same folder as the Max file, which is incredibly smart. If you open the Modify panel, you can see all the proxy parameters here. As mentioned earlier, Project Manager speeds up productivity and work efficiency dramatically. This section allows users to quickly search for files and labels by simply typing in and searching. Another amazing feature is the ability to fix any missing files and textures from a scene before merging it. To do so, simply select and right click a max file, followed by choosing the option to manage asset files, enable the missing option. In a search and relink group, you can choose from any of these options available. For the purpose of this exercise, we just want to search and relink. In a search directories group, let's enable these listed directories to ensure it finds it if available in the network. Also, enable the recursive subfolders and click to start. The recursive subfolders option might take slightly longer to search, but will definitely find them. Only use the recursive folders option if you can't find the missing files through the search and relink only. As you can see, all file status read OK which means all missing files were found and automatically linked perfectly. Once happy, you can choose to apply changes and close. Also, to merge files and animation, simply select and right click, followed by choosing to merge with default 3ds Max dialog or as an X reference scene. Users also have the ability to export to a host of listed options here. Create individual file thumbnails by choosing to automatically render and associate the rendered image with the Max file and much more. The same can be done with materials tab. This concludes our tutorial. I really hope you find it useful, like and share it. And I hope to see you on my next one.